and welcome to Wasp Bastards Podcast. My name is Robert. I'm Damien. I'm Steve. And I'm James. And today we're going to be talking about how we made our recent audio drama production, An Enemy of the People, which we started before the event and um, has taken basically a year to finish. And if that's your thing and you're watching on YouTube, why not like, comment and subscribe? Don't forget, if you're listening to us on any other platforms, please hit that follow button. So uh, back in December of 2019, during Aladdin, uh, I think me and Steve had a conversation in the dressing room about doing a radio play in the new year. We did, we did. And um, so we decided to look into it and... So uh, initially in 2020, we were going to do four projects. Uh, We were going to do Radio Play in the spring, uh, Play in the summer, uh, Murder Mystery in the autumn and Panto uh, at Christmas. And um, so we kind of, we talked about it and we decided, okay, let's do, let's find a script that's public domain, that's quite well known. And we'll do an adaptation of that, like an hour long thing. So um, after some searching, I came across... Ibsen's Enemy of the People, which is a kind of political drama and um, fairly small cast and it's public domain and it's by a well-known writer and so uh, so that was uh, that was what we went with and I did a sort of cut down version of it. I pulled an all-nighter, uh, I um, edited the scripts while watching an entire series of Doctor Who on the TV through the night <laughs> and got it done. <laughs> And um, yeah, good times, good times. Uh, so what Doctor Who was this? What series of it? Oh, <laughs> that's it that's the was, important information. It was classic <laughs> series. Uh, I think it's season eighteen. Okay, you've heard you've heard it here, nope. folks. Season eighteen. No, it was season Which, sixteen. Who was, who was the Doctor? Tom Baker. I thought it was. You've heard it here first, folks. Well. Tom Baker. <coughs> it was yep. season sixteen, the Keats time. Uh, and I watched the entire thing in one night whilst I was in the script. Um, that's why there's a bunch of random typos about, uh, you know, the TARDISes and Daleks and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're just really... getting confused what you're working on. <laughs> yeah. Do- Dr. Stockman isn't actually supposed to be a doctor. I just kept getting confused every time I typed in Mr. Ice and they typed doctor was, instead. Wasn't, wasn't he Reverend Stockman or something like that? <laughs> yeah, Reverend Stockman. <laughs> yeah, and you'll notice that Mayor Stockman, his brother, sometimes is referred to as Master Stockman. One. Yeah. <laughs> is this uh, Enemy of the People like a secret Doctor Who <laughs> script, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it was actually uh, written by uh, Stephen Moffat. He just uh, passed it off as an, an Ibsen play. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we, we did that and we kind of we had met up and we had a read through and we cast it. We cast uh, Lynn Cuffin as. Mrs. Aslickson. We cast Robert as Mr. Billing and a couple of other people. And so we we um, decided to record this in the Ecology Centre in a dressing room with this very elaborate system. Yeah. Right. Explain to our audience what you made us all do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, oh. so we, we got hold of four microphones Um Three SM58s and an SM57, if anyone's interested. Um, they're, they're microphones and for those of you who don't know. <laughs> yeah. Really good microphones, microphones for all of you that uh, don't know. Pieces, pieces of equipment that you can use to record voices and sounds into a computer. Um, <laughs> and we had to have two lap- two laptops and two audio interfaces to connect them and everything. And uh, those are cables. And we went into a dressing room, one of the tiny dressing rooms in the Ecology Centre, and we... Um, got like costume rails um we put costume rails up we got people to bring in blankets and quilts and all sorts of stuff we had like four separate taped off like compartments with microphones and seats and scripts and like music stands with scripts on all this kind of stuff very elaborate they were like cubicles cubicles yeah Yeah. um and i i sort of went okay let's try and record half of the play in one day and i split it into like sections of four so these two pages there's four characters and then one of them leaves and there's another character and so we yeah. record those four pages and then 
have like a recording break and then the next person would come in. It was very elaborate and time consuming. And that was that day was the 29th of February 2020. And I went back to university with the plan to come back in three weeks to record the rest of it. And the day I was due to come back was the day that the Culture Centre closed, the university closed, everything closed, and we weren't able to finish it. Yes. We're not going to explain why, because I'm no. sure you all know. Yes. It was because um, uh, uh, there was rats in the in the um, basement. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we had to get Dick Whitterton's cat around. <laughs> <coughs> what happened to the Echeldra cat? I haven't seen the Echeldra cat in... Yeah. Uh, right. long time. For anyone who doesn't know, the Echeldra doesn't have a cat. It's just a cat that likes to come around into the, into the car park all, like nearly every single day. Oh. So we've kind of christened it the Echeldra cat. <laughs> oh, I think I've seen that cat. Yeah. Doesn't it go in, go inside sometimes and sit on the seats and stuff? Not that I'm aware of. I'm pretty sure that happened once it went in an instant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cute, it's a, like a small little tabby. Very yeah. Cool. The poor cat. And you see here, James is a James is very much a cat person. You you just yep. show a picture of a cat and he stay, stays there for like half an hour going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he tries to talk to all the cats he sees, but they just end up running away. They seem to come towards him. <laughs> Have you got any cats at home, James? I did, but our cat died a couple of years ago, so we oh. are catless at the moment. Um, <clears throat> You're not having my cat, Cookie, even though you liked him. <laughs> <laughs> What's your cat called again, Rob? Uh, well, I have two. One is uh, Mizzy and the other one is Ollie. They're half brother and sister. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yep. I, took, I tried to take a photo of a cat that I saw on the street a while ago and it ran away and I've just got a photo of like half a cat. <laughs> like I just said, all cats just run away from him. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, shout out to the Heldra cat, I hope. Uh, I hope the cat's doing well. Yeah, I'm catching rats and, uh, on the streets. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say that. Uh, <laughs> shout out to all the homeless cats. Uh, hope, hope you find a good home very soon. <laughs> yeah, shout out to all the cats. Hope you uh, hope you hope you like podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hope you like but, podcasts. And to the uh, cats musical, <laughs> you. <laughs> he means the film, not the actual musical in theatre. I know both. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, both. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, enemy of the cats. I mean, enemy of the people. The people. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, who's going to explain what is uh, that play about? Well, it's um, essentially the premise is that uh, this town, originally in Norway, but we've set it in the UK, this town, um, they've just invested in a new public baths system, which is going to bring a lot of tourism and yeah. um, a lot of money and jobs for the town. And the town's doctor, Thomas Stockman, um, has done some investigations and has found that the water supply for the baths is um, is poisoned um, because the town's authorities, led by Thomas's brother Peter, played by Stephen, um, have <laughs> have um, <laughs> basically uh, cut corners and made the the source of the water supply uh, downriver of a bunch of tanneries that are poisoning the water. And so it's kind of a, it's a political drama about kind of social responsibility and like weighing up financial cost against pu public health, which yeah, now I think about it is actually in become more relevant in the last year. Yeah. Given everything that's yes. happened without yeah. getting too much into it, um, uh, you oh. know, about, about weighing up the human cost of versus the money that it costs yeah. to keep people safe. Um, but also it's kind of a, a kind of also about how Thomas, um, his inability to communicate effectively with the public and how he, he becomes ostracized from the, from the community by his inability to communicate ideas with them and 
ultimately the public sides with the authorities rather than rather than him, even if even though he's morally in the right. So it's interesting. Good. I feel like this is some prequel to a, a previous play that we've done called How to Build a Wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't mention that. Don't, don't, don't mention it. Um. <laughs> Why? What was wrong with How to Build a oh, Wall? <laughs> I want did to you know. Notice, I'm interested now. D- did you notice we did the episode with Jacob last week and we didn't mention it a single time? <laughs> <laughs> Managed to just avoid tiptoe around it. Um. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so... No, to be um, fair, I want to avoid that subject too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what, didn't you get enjoyed smack, getting smacked over head by a photo frame? Uh, no, you? it's not that that hurt, because <laughs> oh, no, that was nothing. smacked in the face, didn't you? Smacked in the face. <laughs> I, had to I, tell, about that, yeah. I had to tell Freya, because she was afraid of actually hitting me, I had to tell Freya, hit me. Yeah. And I was tempted to insult her for real for her <laughs> to hit me. <laughs> Just to make it believable. Yeah. Because yeah. we're all we're all there. The audience are around us in a way. We're yeah. pretty much really close to the audience. So if you fake it, it won't look real. No. I, I have done the same as you. I was told <laughs> uh, whoever to slap me as well. I mean, you've got spit in the face in, oh, uh, in did, the previous I, yeah. show. Let me just yeah. point this out. This, this was uh, prior, a long time prior to all this current thing that's happening. <laughs> it was the year before, so it, it was yeah, sort of okay, <laughs> you know. It was pretty much when we got started. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it, I wasn't spat out. It was just water spat out of somebody's mouth at me, not actually spat on, making it clear. Do you want me to do it without water, Steve? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Very nice. But hey, it got a good laugh. So. Oh, it did. Oh, yeah, it did, yeah. I mean, I, I was stupidly it? was the one who suggested it in the first place. <laughs> there we go. I thought better to spit it out at me rather than at somebody in the audience. So. <laughs> yeah. no. Well, you know, took one for the uh, took one for the production Team. there. Yeah. 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 Did I tell you about the time I had to slap someone on stage? No, you <clears> didn't. <throat> it was my last year of school, West Side Story. Uh, it was like very near the end of West Side Story. Um, my character, who's like the old man, because I was the oldest member of the cast and uh had to slap i know tony. the feeling <laughs> um had to slap tony he's the main guy basically the the romeo of west side story and um uh, i had to slap him and shout wake up in his face and uh, uh and they made me slap him for real um and he was fine with it but the worst thing was when we did the we had like a big dress rehearsal um and oh no it wasn't dress rehearsal we had a big like run through it was the first run through with the band there and everything and um anyway the the guy the poor guy had been had just been to a funeral (laughs) (laughs) oh dear and and bear in mind this is just a rehearsal right i I thought i don't really need to practice slapping someone very much i can do it in the dress run and do it on the shows and it'll be fine um and so we we run through the scene and uh and i pretend to slap him and i miss him and uh, and the director sort of stops us and goes, um, uh, James, um, can you do an actual slap? And I went, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I will do for for the actual thing. And she went, no, do, do, just do an actual slap now, please. I went, okay, okay. <laughs> are, are you all right with that? And he went, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we ran the scene again uh, and I slapped him and the whole, everyone in the cast was like 50 plus people in the room and they all gasped. And it was like she just she just told me to do it. <laughs> um, I felt really bad about it. So you should. So I, should, I felt really horrible. Because I know from experience, receiving the slap is not a good experience. <laughs> uh, and it got gasps from the audience as well um, in the shows. Um, yeah, definitely so. had gaps with how to build a wall when yeah. I got slapped as well. <laughs> People were like, oh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fred, my, I put a lot of welly behind it then. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I, I um, when I had to explain to my mum as well that, um, that Freya was. Uh, I told Freya to do it, and she's like, "I'm gonna get Freya." <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to try and explain to her. No, mum, I told her to. Uh, well, Rob, you got <laughs> strangled on stage recently. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that was uh, in a play called. Death Trap. Uh, we yeah. talked about it in episode three, um, but uh, yeah, uh, that was 
That was a while ago now, uh, but it, it still been. feels like yesterday. Um, <laughs> it does, yeah. And um, yeah, I think I think I did mention it in the episode, but uh, it was um, uh, just uh, I'd never um, acted like dead on stage before, so it was that uh, it was just like a fun experience to sort of you know do that sort of thing and try something new. Um, but um, yeah, and the the third uh, night, obviously, I couldn't. Uh, as you guys remember, I couldn't speak at all. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So like just getting getting fake strangled um, didn't help my throat at all. <laughs> no, no. Um, I can imagine. So yeah, that was fun. Okay. Have any of either of you guys died on stage? I'm trying to remember. As Literally, in, um, or... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so, uh, I, I literally died on stage, and then I had to do CPR to start. Where do you get to? By the way, is my <laughs> I, I got. I died of a splurge gun in Bugsy Malone. Oh, again, that's in nice school. For you. That was fun. <clears throat> nearly got, nearly got actually blinded because the person shooting me shot me in the face with this horrible <laughs> chemical stuff. <laughs> The only time I remember playing the character that got killed is in a, a film that I, I did, uh, I've already mentioned, called Method. And yeah. uh, my my character in that, um, spoilers, gets killed. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. you gets, died uh, in, the, in the equipment van, didn't you? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Outside. Got, uh, yeah, got, got uh, strangled to death. Can I can yeah. I just point out to do with the uh, method though? Yeah, you were um, you were the lighting yeah. engineer, weren't you? Yeah, and you've been yeah. asked to put some in method. You've been asked, oh, as the character now. You've been asked to uh, put some lights on the stage. Yeah. You were on the sound desk. <laughs> <laughs> so you go, so you go turn on the light, and you end up playing some ACDC instead. No, no, no. <laughs> can I make a point? <laughs> when you asked me to go with the light, uh, the light. Can you, can you shut up, James? <laughs> <laughs> I actually used a big um, standalone spotlight and had to move that around. Yeah, yeah, you done that. But when you were at the desk and he's asking yeah. you to put some lights on, yeah, you were there. Oh, yeah, at the, no, like, yeah, I know. You were there at the sound uh, desk. Well, that's but I was told to sit, <laughs> so I sat there. <laughs> you were uh, when when you was up there, Steve. You had a had a line that you said. Can you remember what you said? Uh, as, as Sparky, yeah, I think it was something like, um, well, "It's not my fault. This thing looks like it still runs on bloody gas." <laughs> yes, I definitely recall that line. So yeah, yeah, I don't, no, I, I don't think it was that one. It was um, oh, it it was something. I'm a I, I'm a lighting technician, not a bloody something something. Oh, I think oh yeah, I'm a lighting technician, not a bloody miracle worker. That's it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that um was that so, like a reference to like Star Trek or something? Um <laughs> I've given it all I've got, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was just wondering right now, was that like a reference uh was your line a reference to Star Trek like when uh, uh Dr. McCoy in the original series says uh, something like uh, uh you know, I I'm a doctor, Jim, I'm not a door stop. Something like that. <laughs> um, I mean, it could well have been. It was Brian that uh, wrote the script and everything, so he may have got inspiration from things like that. Was Brian a star of Star uh, a, a, a star, star of Star Trek? Was, was, <laughs> was Brian a fan of Star Trek or something? Um, I don't know, really. I haven't spoken to him about that. I know he was a big fan of Doctor Who. Ah, since, he, since he likes um, the sci-fi, then yeah. he could possibly he like probably, Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine he did watch it, yeah been watching the original series of star trek for the first time at the moment oh there we go enjoying it are you are you enjoying it yeah yeah it's great i'm more of a star <coughs> wars person actually, oh. so uh, so i'm not going to watch that star trek rubbish <laughs> excuse me just get out right now <laughs> oh, uh, uh, excuse you <laughs> should we take this outside <laughs> yeah <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Let's have a social distance fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting outside. This is a great idea. You can practice your stage slaps while you're... Uh, while you're <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, should we veer back in the general direction of the topic? 
Okay, Talking man. to social distance, um, social distance fight. I don't know if any of you've seen, but there's a a hail and pace sketch from many years ago where they did sort of something that looks like a, a social distance um, fight. It's a pub scene. Yes. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Yeah, uh, you know, when they're in the pub, and um, instead of um, they're, they're having a, a shouting, slanging match with each other, and they're smashing glasses and things on themselves instead of on each other as if they're having a social distance <laughs> fight it's quite funny um, um problem with enemy of the people was i was using it for a uni course bit, bit of uni coursework so i kind of had to get it finished um, yeah so basically i ended up recording like most of my character's lines at home and then like recording some narration and cutting some bits and trying to piece it together with what we'd already recorded. And um, it was okay for what it was. Um, <laughs> but it, that that at least sort of started to get me thinking about how to record things remotely. And yeah. um, gradually that kind of led to what we've been doing since then. And now we're at the point where we're able to record things remotely. So, And record this we- podcast. Yes, indeed. including this podcast, yeah. So finally, we we kind of decided to just finish Enemy of the People off and um, just record it all remotely because um, it's been nearly a year now since we started it. So, yeah, um, <coughs> we're still pretty much starting again with it, aren't we? Yeah, I wanted to keep a few lines from the original recording sessions just kind of for posterity. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're pretty much recording it from scratch. So, and why why weren't you uh, able to keep the original lines? Um, because well, the the thing is, I went through what we recorded and kind of looked at it, and there were a bunch of lines that I'd wanted to re-record. Not not loads of lines, but there was there were very few whole sections where there wasn't there weren't any lines. Um, that I didn't want to re-record so um, if we'd re-recorded those it would have sounded weird because different location different microphone Mm. um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything and also the problem with we had with the original sessions was that in the dressing room where we recorded it there's a a skylight that rattles in the wind so there was wind and rain (laughs) on the skylight so there was a lot of background noise. Um, no, 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 it's atmospheric noises, James. Atmospheric. <laughs> <laughs> Unplanned atmospheric noises that I had to cover up with proper atmospheric sound. Um, so if, if you listen to the original mix of it, every scene is absolutely hammering it down with rain. <laughs> <laughs> Why are these people always talking in the rain? <laughs> um, so... I think there's a few bits that are salvageable, but for most, for the most part, it's probably just best to start from scratch. Mm-hmm. Really, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, and some of us have um, so, uh, some of us have kind of changed since then as well. Mm, yeah, I think the so performances are different a little bit. Yeah, so for consistency reasons, we can't just use the no. same yeah. previous ones. Really, fair enough. So we never actually got to rehearse or record with the originally, did we, Rob? Because I think you were working that day. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember uh, you sent me a message um, asking me if I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and I was like, yeah, sure, you know, why not? I hadn't done an audio play before, so I was really up for, um, you know, participating. Um, and we did a we did arrange a day um, to do it. Um, I can't actually remember why we didn't. Um, it was possibly because I had to do an extra shift at work, something like that. I don't think it was oh, anything yeah. on your end. Um, no, because we did we did do the recordings on that day that we arranged. I think it was because you had work. Yeah, if I remember uh-huh, rightly. Uh-huh. Yeah, but hey, it would have been a waste of time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a fun day. Like, uh, you know, if I remember. Uh, it was also that day we had to take Freya to the uh, minor injuries unit. Oh yeah, we did, didn't we? Oh, we went to. What was it that was we, wrong with her? We went oh, to. Uh, we went to Roland's Pharmacy. Close. Yeah. We went to Boots. They said go to. Uh, yeah. Go to the uh, unit thing. Yeah. What, uh, what you said now? Stanley Hospital. Yeah. In Hollyhead. Yeah. 
Yeah, she she got it quickly or something in school. She was in sixth form, she, and uh, she hit her head on a fire extinguisher or something. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. it. And yeah. only Freya could do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Hello, Freya, if you're listening. Yeah, Freya, if you're listening. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was a cracking day. I, I remember we sat in the... This is a really stupid thing to remember, but we sat in the waiting room at the Minor Injuries Unit, me, Damien and Stephen, we were playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Whilst Freya was getting her head examined, we were just playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire outside that door. <laughs> While Freya was getting her head examined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. She was choice of words there. It's the kind of thing you end up missing pretty pretty soon, isn't it? Yeah. did we know eh? <laughs> yeah um and that was that day was the last i haven't been in in the ecology center since that day uh... mm, you guys have <laughs> but, um, what was that sorry he, he hasn't been, been in, in the ecology since oh right he hasn't been in the ecology since freya hit her head <laughs> well, i mean you have on the laptop yeah, and the laptop. <laughs> yeah, but not in real life, Stephen. <laughs> you transferred into a laptop to, just to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and that was for recording. Uh, that was for recording Santa at the station, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah. 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 No, well, not Santa at the, at the station. Steve at the station. <laughs> no, Leprechaun at the station. Uh, what? Leprechaun <laughs> at the station. Gnome's Revenge. <laughs> Gnomes <laughs> hmm. Santa at the station three, Gnomes Revenge of the Umpalumpa. <laughs> oh my god, that's a title. <laughs> hey, have you seen Gnomes Revenge Three? Uh, Revenge of the Umpalumpa? <laughs> <laughs> no, which one's that again? <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> yeah, you can't see right now, but Steve is shaking his head. Uh, I was I was talking to someone yesterday. Um, so it was my aunt yesterday, who uh, she lives. Uh, that's a complete another story. Uh, we were saying about how, like, you know, you do video calls with people all the time, and you kind of forget that actually you haven't seen these people in person for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, I realised that I haven't seen you guys in person for like six months, and Rob probably even longer. It was that day in the summer yeah. was the last time I actually oh, saw yeah, you in yeah. person. Yeah. Well, right. the last time I remember seeing you in person was when we went to Damon's foster parents. Uh, oh, house. you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, actually, yeah. That's that's that the was... last time I remember. I don't think, don't think I've seen you in person after that. Oh, my my foster parents' place. Yeah, oh, I was yeah. I was just yeah. thinking. Hang on, when did you come here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, uh, uh, not your flat. No, we went to see um, to have a look at the field outside for a possible uh, filming location. For the film, homicidal. Yes, that was a good I was, day. I was, oh, yeah, I I was wait, waiting thing. for James to say that to see if he remembered the title. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> James. Do you remember okay. what film we're doing? Um, murder, but murder on the um, murder killing. <laughs> Killing Peter, no, I can't remember. <laughs> that was a good day. Cats. We're doing cats. <laughs> well, <Enemy. laughs> so, uh, Enemy of the People. Um, oh, yeah. Back to that. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got like 10 minutes of Enemy of the People and 50 minutes of everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've got about 20 divergence from it. I think we got as far as, Rob, you were at work that day. And then we veered off. Um, but, yeah. What do you mean we veered off? I veered yeah. off. <laughs> That's better. Um, so, uh, but, but yeah, you're playing Mr. Billing, who's one of the editors at the newspaper. and um, Indeed. Yeah. I edit those papers. You edit those papers like a... Like a badass. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and Damien's playing uh, Captain Horster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Captain Horster. Yeah. And we've also, we're originally going to have Mike from the Akeldra as uh, the old man, uh, Morton Keel. But um, we ended up with Jacob Roberts doing a 
very interesting voice. Yeah. <laughs> very interesting. If you hear this, Jacob. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was good, but it was weird. Yes. Very chain smokery kind of person voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would work well in cartoon, though, to be fair. Yeah. He is a, he is a cartoon, isn't he? J- Jacob, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, Stephen's playing the mayor. I am indeed. That's the politician. Yes. Yeah, the um, pompous authority figure. Yep. Very much not playing against type. <laughs> no, nope, not at all. <laughs> uh, and I'm playing um, uh, angry, shouty, ranty man. Again, not playing against type very much. And uh, we also have uh, characters that we change gender. We have Fang Harrod as Miss Hofstad, oh, yes. journalist. Yeah. Um, and we have Lynn, Lynn? as yep. Mrs. Aslaxon. Um, yeah. And we have who else? Freya as my wife. My wife. And yeah. Seren as my daughter. Yep. Uh, Petra. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Let's just go back. James, you're married? <laughs> and you have <laughs> a <character>. daughter? <laughs> Since <laughs> when? <laughs> a, a daughter that's uh, like five years younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that can happen. What? <laughs> well, uh, hopefully, I mean, we're recording this in advance, but hopefully, by the time this episode comes out, we'll have also finished Enemy of the People. So uh, yes, oh yeah, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Really, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll maybe we'll put a little preview segment in here uh, for you to have oh, a little yeah. snippet of. Oh yeah, that's that's a good idea. point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My brother has unfortunately always been a rather headstrong man. Do you still intend to give him your support, Miss Hopstead? <clears throat> I've taken the liberty of drawing up a short resume of the situation, as it appears from a reasonable man's perspective. In it, I have indicated how certain possible defects might suitably be remedied without outrunning the resources of the Bath Committee. Have you got it with you, Mr Mayor? Yes, I brought it with me, in case you should... Uh... It's me again. Oh. I see. You're here trying to talk them over. Well, it won't work, Peter. There's going to be a revolution in town tomorrow. I have the power of the People's Messenger and the Householders Association on my side. I'm afraid not, Doctor. I beg your pardon? You've represented your case in a false light, Doctor, and therefore I am unable to give you my support. I cannot and will not print it. Nonsense. You're the editor, and an editor controls his paper. No, the subscribers control the paper, Doctor. Fortunately. It's public opinion. The enlightened public and householders. They control the newspapers. And I have all these influences against me? Yes, you have. It would mean the absolute ruin of the community if your article were to appear. Indeed. So it's impossible for you to print my article in the People's Messenger then, Miss Hofstad? I'm afraid so. Then perhaps you would accept this instead. It's an official statement. May I trouble you? Certainly. I will see that it's printed. But not mine. Do you really think you can silence me and stifle the truth? Mrs Aslickson, kindly take my manuscript and print it as a pamphlet at my expense. I will have 400 copies. No, 500, 600 copies. I'm sorry, Dr Stockman. I can't do that. Then kindly give it me back. Here it is. Very well. If you won't print it, I'll read it out at a town meeting tomorrow night. All my fellow citizens will hear the voice of truth. You will not find any public body in the town that would give you the use of their hall for such a purpose. Is everyone in this town a coward like you? They all think of nothing but their families and themselves and never of the community. Right, if I can't hire a hall, I'll hire a drum and parade the town with it and spread my message at every street corner. No one in the whole town will go with you. Catherine will, and Petra, and the boys. You can't stop me, Peter. The truth will be heard, whatever the cost. So for one of my uh, pits of coursework this year, I had to do a um, uh, collaboration um, with someone. 
with another artist and um so i i wanted to do uh, an an audio short drama or short story and um uh i kind of struggled to find someone to to write something for me for a while and um um and anyway part of the part of the module was um i had to do a series of like blog posts and stuff and one of the blog posts was i had to find a um a similar project to what i wanted to do um online and talk about it in a blog post so i I went on youtube and i typed in audio drama and i scrolled through a bunch of stuff and i found this random one called the will of the woods by uh, a dutch company called audio epics and i listened to a bit of it and i thought yes this this is all right i'll do this and um anyway so i went on this company's website and i looked at the cast list and i scrolled down to the bottom of the cast list and the it was a bunch of dutch names and the bottom name was uh james bishop i'm like huh weird i know a guy called james bishop from uni and from the drama society and i thought it can't be the same one surely that'd be really weird uh and it was the same one and um i remember that this guy also does writing and writes short stories and stuff so i sent him an email and i told him that i'd just come across this random thing that he was in and asked if he wanted to do something so so he agreed and he wrote me this um this sort of short story called russians a kind of spy thriller chase thing and um so i've done sound and music for that and i've gone for like epic orchestral blockbuster music and um yeah so here's a little snippet of it an old woman's screech from above made him look up he's over here she shouted in russian over here i see him Matthews heard a whistle blow three times out on the street. He darted across the courtyard and through a narrow door he had spotted in the opposite wall. The woman's shouts grew more strident as she saw Matthews. He looked up briefly as he skidded round the corner of the doorway to see her black-skirted figure craning over the railings at the top of the escape, waving and gesturing towards the yard below. He turned back to the narrow door and pulled it to, slamming the bolt across. Matthews found himself in a dingy alley running between tall warehouses like the one he had left. A few dozen yards away, he could see people passing, heads down against the whirling snow. A tram clanked by, bell jangling. Beyond the wall, his pursuers shouted and heavy boots pounded at the wooden door. Whistles blew louder. The old woman screeched down into the yard again. A panel splintered in the heavy timber and Matthews took off down the alley slithering through the snow towards the main thoroughfare. There was a splintering crash behind him as he rounded the corner onto the main street. Dodging between the crawling traffic to merge into the lunchtime crowd, Matthews kept his head down. He pulled the brim of his hat lower over his face and turned his collar up. Above the din of traffic and rattling of trams, he heard the whistles blow once more, and then twice again in quick succession. Shots fired a little way behind him and he dodged into a doorway. Peering round the edge of the stonework, he saw, further up the street, crowds beginning to gather and some kind of commotion going on. Then a group of fur-hatted soldiers closed in to surround a single figure in a long grey gabardine. Renfrew. The Englishman stood motionless as an officer walked up. He raised his pistol and fired a single shot into Renfrew's head. The agent crumpled to the ground. Well, there you go. Anyway, I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that. That was my shameless plug for this week, um, or shameful plug. I don't know, um, but yeah, check that out. Link in the description and so on. Yeah. Okay, uh, time for this week's quiz. Uh, take it away, Stephen. Okay. Now this week's quiz is about, or this episode's quiz even is about theatres and plays. <clears throat> so. Here we go with five questions. Question number one. A reconstruction of which theatre opened in 1997, approximately 750 feet from the site of the original theatre, which was demolished in 1644? Next question is, um, on a stage, what name is given to the out-of-view areas on the sides of a main performance area? Go ahead. Steve. Question uh, three is: How many West End theatres are there? 
You can we have a point for who's closest? Yes, you may. Uh, question four is Philip Schofield, Jason Donovan, and Donny Osmond have all played the starring role in which stage musical? And then question five is in November 1952, which Agatha Christie murder mystery play opened at the Ambassador's Theatre and is now the longest running play in the UK? Okay, I'm ready for the answers, really, Steve. Yeah, everybody ready for the answers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so question one was <clears throat> a reconstruction of which theatre opened in 1997, approximately 750 feet from the site of the original theatre, which was demolished in 1644. The answer was the globe. the globe. Yay! Yes. Well done. On a stage, what is given to the name of the out-of-view areas on the sides of a main performance area? Wings? Is it Wings? It is Wings! Yay! Cool. I was going to say, is it also the name of a band that Paul McCartney was in? <laughs> and then someone could have said, what? Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then next question is How many West End theatres are there? Now let's hear your answers Rob, what have you got? I'm just going to say 30 Okay, James? One No, I'm joking, 34 David? 420,069 <laughs> Well, um, two of you weren't far off Oh, so that's not me then. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, is actually uh, the answer is thirty nine. Oh, so Rob gets the point. No, you said thirty four, didn't you, Jim? You, oh, you said thirty nine. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thirty nine. Hey, I get yeah. the point. No. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, yes. Next question is: Philip Schofield, Jason Donovan, and Donny Osmond have all played the starring role in which stage musical? Damien, what's the answer? Joseph has an amazing technical dream coat. Yes, certainly is. And uh, for the final question, in November 1952, which Agatha Christie murder mystery play opened at the Ambassador's Theatre and is now the longest running play in the UK? I'll give you guys the go first because I think I've got it. James? Mousetrap. Rob? I didn't put an answer. And Damien? James's shameful plug. <laughs> what? Um, well, the correct answer is the mouse trap. Well done, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the five questions. I've got three. Oh, very good. We read the mouse trap in the uh, script club a while back, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes. Because I can't. Because they the thing is they say about the mouse trap is that it's got this amazing twist at the end, and you're not supposed to tell anyone what the twist is. Yes. And. I can't, I've actually forgotten what the twist is now. So have I, 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 I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> but when it when it happened, when we got to that point in the script, I thought, uh, is that the twist? Surely that's not yeah. the big twist, like the famous yeah. twist, because it wasn't very good. Um, no, it wasn't. I don't think it's particular. I don't think it's aged very well, that play. I don't think it's quite as... It wasn't quite worth the hype, really, was it? No, I don't think it's aged. Maybe, maybe for the time it was, but I don't think yeah. it's aged very well. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, thanks for that quiz, Steve. Um, uh, you're welcome. And well, how many points did you get, uh, James? Uh, I got five points. Oh, and Rob? I didn't hear how much you had. I only got the one. <laughs> oh. Looks like... Uh, Not a very high scorer on these quizzes. <laughs> and and I have three points, which means Rob is our... To, uh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big loser. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have three points, which means Rob is today's big loser. Big loser. Great. I'm always the big loser. Big loser. <laughs> big loser. It's not going to be a thing. Every episode is you, the big loser. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, I'll be very shocked and surprised if one of these episodes, I will actually have more points. Like, that would be, I, I would be amazed. Well, you know what that means, Rob. That means uh, you'll be doing the questions for next episode's quiz. Bing bong! And that signals the end to another uh, podcast episode. Uh, We, uh, as always, hope you enjoy. Uh, If you did, then you know what to do. Uh, Hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below telling us what you think. 
And if you are listening on any of the platform, then uh, please hit that follow button. Hey, Steve, did you know this podcast was available on most streaming platforms? Like Amazon Podcast, for example. I did. And did you know that there was links in the description below for our other channels and websites, Damien? Oh. <laughs> and on that note, it's goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me. And to play us out, uh, here's some uh, music from that thing that I shamelessly plugged earlier. Uh, <laughs> Russians. Uh, hope you enjoy. And it's a uh, goodbye from me. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Try.